We are once again here, wherever here is, since after all, here in these days is an indeterminate place. And I start with place because I want to speak about a place. Not so much Jerusalem, although this week we celebrated Yom Yerushalayim and it is a beautiful and wonderful place to speak about, but the place that we inhabited before Yerushalayim, and that is the wilderness. But I don't wanna talk so much about the wilderness as an actual physical place, its features, rather, I want to talk about what it meant for Israel to go from Egypt into the wilderness. It is something that I think in a certain way we understand on a level now that we have not understood before. Let me go back a bit and give you a couple of analogs from Jewish history and from modern contemporary European history to illustrate what it is that I mean. When God commanded Abraham to take his son up to the mountain and to sacrifice him there, the Akedah, and Abraham takes Isaac up to the mountain and he binds him to the altar. And then as the ax is in his hand, the Malach, the angel, grabs his hand or calls to him, grabs his hand metaphorically and in Caravaggio's painting, but calls to him and says, Abraham, 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 and he stops and then sacrifices a lamb, a ram. The question that the Kotzka Rebbe asks is, in that entire experience, what was the hardest part for Abraham? And his answer was coming down the mountain. Was having to live with what it is that he had done. Recognizing it was over. How now to organize his life so that it made sense given the experience of the Akedah. And I want to take that in a particular direction. I've spoken about this idea before, but not in this way, because I want to connect it to something that is more in our own experience, at least those of us who are a little bit older. As the Soviet Union was starting to come apart in the 80s under Mikhail Gorbachev, one of the catalysts for the breakup of the Soviet Union was the solidarity movement in Poland. And the leader of that movement was Lech Walesa. And I remember watching a TV interview with him as this was all unfolding. And someone asked him, what's going on? And this was his explanation. He said, you know, I am by profession, a carpenter. And I have never broken a screw by tightening it, but I have broken a lot of screws by loosening them. And Gorbachev, he said, is loosening a lot of screws. The reality is when the freedom kicks in, when the ordeal is over, that's the dangerous time. We think of the dangerous time as being slavery, and obviously slavery was a terrible time for the Israelites. But there was a danger in the wilderness that did not exist in slavery. Just imagine, you're entirely at the whim of someone else, your days, are scheduled and confined 
and limited and constricted. And suddenly, suddenly you're in the wilderness, complete openness, no restrictions. And what do the Israelites do? They gather around the golden calf. Because being able to endure slavery is no guarantee of being able to be mature in freedom. Now, you may be ahead of me. You may see where I'm going. Egypt was the quarantine. Obviously, not identical. But there was a safety in being locked away. Was it unpleasant? Was it difficult? For some people, did it impose an unbelievable hardship? Yes, but there was also a certain safety. And once things begin to open up, there are dangers that did not exist when everything was closed. And that reality, the reality of the first steps outside the door, metaphorically speaking, should alert us to the fact that we have to engage that most difficult emotional response, which is limitation in freedom. That because you can do something does not mean you must do something. That the threat is not gone just because some of the restrictions are loosened. And so our, the call to be responsible is as great today, in some ways greater than it was initially. Because remember, doors are more dangerous than walls. But also, doors are how you get outside. I don't in any way have any expertise or any special knowledge about how much should be opened or when it should be opened or how it should be opened and whether this country is doing it right or that city is doing it right or this governor is wise or that governor is foolish. Your guess, my friends, is as good as mine and in many cases, probably much better. I have ideas, but I also know they could easily be wrong. But there is one thing I do know, and that is that sooner or later, things will have to progressively open. And when they do, the Torah has a lesson to teach us. Not the responsibility of slavery, but the responsibility of freedom. Not what it means to be locked away, but what it means to act carefully when you're in the desert, when the world is open, when you can come and go as you please, but you know that things are not so simple. And so this week, when we read Parshat Bamidbar, the Parsha of the, the beginning of the book, the wanderings of the Jews in the desert, let's learn the central lesson from this book, which is that freedom implies responsibility. That when the chains come off, that's when the internal measurements must take hold. 
that ultimately all of us are accountable not to any external force other than the Kaddish Baruch Hu, other than God, but to our own soul sense of what is safe, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors, our community, our country, and our world. Remember that the generation that went into the desert never adequately learned that lesson, and so they were not ready to go into the land of Israel. May we prove to be wiser and better. May we learn from their example. May we open our doors and still say, stay, stay safe. Shabbat Shalom.